Hi everyone, my name is Brandon and today we're going to be taking a look at Brandon's Buttons. And yes, in case you're wondering, I really am the Brandon from Brandon's Buttons. Today I'm going to be going over how to play the game. So first let's take a look at the help screen. So if you click a button, it changes color along with all of the buttons above, below, and to the left and right of the button you pressed. The object of the game is to turn all of the buttons on. This isn't a real puzzle, so let's head over to the main game next. The default setting is free play, although you can toggle through to move limit or off only. Free play gives you unlimited moves, but you'll get a higher rating if you solve the puzzle in the fewest amount of moves possible. Move limit is just like it sounds. You have a limited number of moves to solve the puzzle. This sounds challenging, but it actually helps since you know exactly how many buttons you need to press in order to solve the puzzle. And lastly, we have off only. In this mode, you can only press the off buttons, turning them on. That means you can't turn a button off again. So if you see a solution that involves pressing a button that is currently on, you can't do that. It also means that you can't easily take back a move, so you'll really need to concentrate in this one. There are 10 sizes to select from, with 10 set puzzles in each. But if you can manage to beat all 100 puzzles, you can also generate random puzzles in any size of board and with any number of moves. We'll cover that in another topic. If you're looking for a real challenge, we also have challenge mode. These are very difficult puzzles with a large number of moves, and the game won't tell you how many moves required to solve it. I'll show you some of those in an upcoming video, but you can see the designs below. So let's go ahead and try the first puzzle. So in this one, five buttons are off and four are turned on. If you click any of the buttons, it will change from on and off and along, but along with the buttons next to it. Uh, clicking it again takes you back to the previous position. If you get really stuck, you can also reset the puzzle by pressing the refresh button at the top of the screen. Resetting the puzzle also resets the number of moves you pressed, allowing you to get a better rating. This puzzle is fairly simple, and now that we know the controls, the solution is much more obvious. We just need to press the middle button, and there we go. Perfect. Couldn't have done better myself, which is true because that actually is me. How does it know? <laughs> uh, now, this puzzle is actually based off of an older game. Uh, I saw this particular puzzle design in one of the puzzle rooms in Super Mario RPG for the Super NES, uh, but the original design dates back much er earlier than that. I chose this as my first commercial release because it seemed like a simple idea with a lot of potential, and I like designing puzzles and working with patterns. I'll be covering uh, the other game difficulties and customization in future videos, so be sure to join us next time when we take a look at some of the intermediate levels. If you're looking to pick up a copy of the game, it will be releasing on Steam later this year. You can also follow us on Twitter at Massive underscore CA, or visit us online at MassiveCorp.ca. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.